Okay, today's video, as you can see, is entitled AC Inductive Reactants Part 4, and in this video I'm going to go over circuit analysis for a series RL circuit. And this is the circuit we have. We have an RL circuit, a resistor and an inductor, and we have a time-varying voltage source. And it says here that the resistor has a resistance of 150 ohms, and it's placed in series with a, an inductor, which is 750 millihenries. The current through the circuit is 0 0.77 amperes, and the frequency of this circuit is... The frequency of the source is 55 hertz. Now, these are the things we're going to do in this video. We're going to determine the circuit impedance and draw the phasor diagram for the impedance. We're going to determine the voltage drop across the resistor, the inductor, and the voltage of the source. We are going to draw the phasor diagram for the voltages and determine the phase angle phi. Now, I want to point out, and I'll show where this is important in the video, that this current here, 0 0.77 amperes, I did not specify whether this is the RMS or the peak current, when you're calculating the voltages, if you're asked for the RMS voltages, you have to have the RMS current. If you're asked for the peak voltage, you have to have the peak current. And maybe you need to convert from one to the other before you begin the problem or after you calculate those. But please don't mix up your peaks and your RMSs, and I'll show you where that's important in just a moment. Okay, you want to draw the phasor diagram and calculate the impedance for this circuit. In order to calculate the impedance, we use this equation, Z, the impedance is equal to the square root of R squared plus the inductive reactants squared, XL, reactants. We know the resistance. We don't know the inductive reactants. We need the inductive reactants to calculate the impedance and also to draw the phasor diagram for the impedance. So we're going to calculate the inductive reactants first, which is the inductive reactants is 2 times pi times the frequency source times the inductance of the inductor. And that gives us that the inductive reactance is 2 times pi times 55 hertz times 750 millihenries, milli, so we change that to 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 3 is millihenries, and therefore we get that the inductive reactance is 259 ohms. Now we can calculate the impedance, and then first we're going to draw the impedance phasor diagram. We draw, typically, the vector representing the resistance along the positive x-axis, R. We draw the vector representing the inductive reactants along the positive y-axis, like that. Now I tried to draw these to scale. This is supposed to be 150 long. This one's longer. It's 259 ohms long. Now when we calculate the impedance, we're calculating the sum of all the oppositions to the current. So we can represent that graphically. I just want to say this is the uh, impedance diagram, impedance phasor diagram. When we do that, we add those two values up in order to get the impedance, and we do that using the head-to-tail method. And when we do that, the sum of those two vectors is represented by that yellow vector, which is the impedance. And you can basically see here we have a right triangle. So when we calculate this side, this is the hypotenuse. We're going to be using this is basically, or this is the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is c squared. I took the square root of both sides, and I get z is equal to the square root of r squared plus the inductive reactants squared. All right, so now I'm simply going to plug the values in, and I get z, the impedance, is equal to the square root of 150 squared plus 259 squared, and that means the impedance of this circuit is 300 ohms. Okay, this is obviously the mathematical solution to the impedance, and this is kind of a graphical representation of the impedance using the phasor diagram, and some people will call this the impedance triangle. All right. That's the first thing we're going to do. Next thing we're going to do is calculate the voltages, resistor, inductor, and the source. We do that using Ohm's law for all three. For resistors, we typically just write down V equals I times R, and we get 115 volts. For the inductor, we're going to write down V equals I times XL, which is the inductive reactance. Remember, resistors have resistance. Inductors have reactance. So we just calculate that. We get 199 volts, and then to calculate the voltage of the source, we're also going to use Ohm's law, but the voltage of the source, which is basically the total voltage, is the current times the total um, of all the resistances to the current flow, which is, is the impedance, and we calculate and we get that 230 volts. Okay. Now, I just want to point out, as I said earlier, this current, it doesn't specify whether this is the RMS current. If this is the RMS current, then this is the RMS voltages. If this is the peak current, then these are the peak voltages, all right? So don't get those mixed up. Now, also I want to point out, according to Kirchhoff's laws, 
the sum of the voltage drops should equal the voltage gain. Well, this is 230 volts for the source. And these two, if you add these up, you actually get 314, I believe. 314 is more than 230. But remember, this is an AC voltage source. And all of these values are time varying values are changing over time. But at any point in time, these two values, the drops, should equal or will equal the voltage gain. All right? So keep that in mind. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the phasor diagram for voltage and calculate the phase angle phi. Now, these are the voltages that we calculated earlier. And this is the voltage that we calculated early for the source. This is the resistor and the inductor. Typically, when you draw the phasor diagram for the voltages, you put the voltage for the resistor on the x-axis because you also draw the current on the x-axis and the voltage and the current for resistors are in phase. Now the voltage across the inductor leads the current by 90 degrees, so we put, typically put that on the positive y-axis. And once again, I tried to draw these to scale. This is supposed to be 115 volts long, and this is a little longer because it's 199 volts long. All right. Now in order to calculate the phase angle, we're going to add these two vectors up once again. Head to tail method. This the sum of those two vectors equals the voltage of the source, and the angle phi, this angle here, is the voltage, excuse me, is the angle by which the voltage leads the current in this RL circuit. It's going to be somewhere between zero and 90 degrees. Okay? Now before we calculate the angle phi, I just want to confirm what I got for the voltage. You can see once again I have a voltage triangle here, I have a right triangle, and I can use the Pythagorean theorem once again to calculate the length of this side. Now we already calculated that as 230, but I just like to check it. Okay, so I have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This is the hypotenuse of this triangle. Take the square root of both sides and just check that. You get, once again, 230 volts. So if I get 230 volts here, it matches what I calculated earlier. That gives me a good idea that these voltages are correct and that the current that I use to calculate these voltages is also correct. All right? Now, the last thing is just to get phi, the angle by which the voltage leads the current in this circuit. Typically, that is done using the tangent function. You can use, now that we know all three sides, we could use the tangent, the sine, and the cosine. Typically, it's done with a tangent so that the arc tangent of phi, that angle, is equal to the opposite side, which is the voltage across the inductor, divided by the adjacent side because tangent is opposite over adjacent. And therefore, we get that the arc tangent is equal to 199 volts divided by 115. And that means that phi, in this case, the voltage by the voltage, the angle by which the voltage leads the current is 60 degrees. Okay? So I think we did everything we wanted to do. I hope you found that video helpful. I tried to go everything, go over everything step by step. If you found that helpful, please do all the following three things. Subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up for this video and leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. I appreciate your comments. Let me know what do you think. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.